Welcome to Lightways at Life Astrologer with me, Anna Isabel, and my guest today, Sharon Knight. Hello, Sharon. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Anna Isabel. <laughs> well, it's lovely to, to see you too. Um, you are doing, um, well, you're covering a topic that lots of people find a little bit tricky, your horary astrology, and you're doing this at the Astrology Lodge for the traditional day, which is, everybody make a note, 15th of April from 10 to 4.30. So I thought we've had maybe two or three guests um, in the last couple of years um, talk about horary astrology. Um, but I think maybe it might be good to start at the beginning and to just explain what it is and then maybe we could talk about where to start well that yeah that's going to be the topic that i'm speaking on is what is horary astrology where to start and then actually looking at examples so horary astrology now there's debate about which came first the chicken or the egg um was it electional or inceptions and then the horary astrology kind of devolved from inception astrology. But the one thing is, we know it's been around for millennia. And horary astrology is looking for an answer. So horary is literally of the hour or of the moment. And somebody will ask the astrologer a question. Will I get the job and the astrologer looks at their clock on their computer because we don't use sundials anymore, at least not here in England, because um, there's not enough sun really, um, hence the computer. So we look, at, we look at the chart and we look at the degree of the sign that's rising over the horizon at the moment, question is not only asked but understood by the astrologer and I'll be showing an example of a chart that somebody approached me three weeks before I looked at their question and it's absolutely fascinating what unfolded in in the three weeks so um so the astrologer will then take the planet that rules the sign on the ascendant as the indicator of the person asking the question and that person is called a querent. They're, qu they're querying something. And the subject about which they're asking is the quesited. It's, it's what they want to know. So just using a very simple question, which is fairly frequent, will I get the job? So we look at something called the 10th place or the MC degree. And we look to see if the planet that rules the 10th place or the MC is coming together with the planet indicating the person asking the question. Now, very often they don't come together. So we look for a mediator, which is normally the moon. And because she goes so fast, she talks to all the different planets and she will bring a resolution. And, and so we can say to the person, yes, you will get the job, or no, it's going to somebody else. So that's, that's very basic and simple. What a lot of people in horary astrology do, especially when they're learning, is they give a load of background detail to the person. The reason you didn't get the job is because it's gone to a person who's um, got a scar on their face, and they speak with the lisp and they've got hanging eyebrows. Doesn't help the person because they haven't got the job. They, they're really not interested in the description of the person who gets the job over them. So that's, horary astrology is such a beautiful form of astrology. And when you get into it, you start learning about dignities and exhortations and how different factors can actually make things happen, even when it seems an impossibility. 
you can sometimes pull something out of the woodwork. And my, my master was William Lilly, who was a 17th century astrologer. And in his book, Christian Astrology, which, oh, it's not there, it's normally behind me. Um, and it's fallen apart anyway. Um, he asked the question about buying some houses in the Strand in London. And you look at this chart and nothing says, yes, you're going to get them. Absolutely nothing. And in horary astrology, there's things called strictures and cautions. Now, some people take strictures and cautions to say, the chart can't be read, not possible. Every chart can be read because life isn't perfect for any of us. You know, even King Charles is not being perfect. Um, so when you read, will he get Master B's house or houses? You think, come on, Will, you've, you've made this up. You're not gonna get it, but he does get it but with strictures and cautions. It's not quite how he got it. He paid money, he paid more than he wanted to pay for them. Um, so you can look at a horary chart and if it doesn't say yes or no immediately, you then look how to manipulate things and make things happen. And sometimes you just have to say, sod it, I'm going for it and it's oh, sorry. I'm going for it anyway, and uh, and that's that's what you do. So um, yeah, I'll be I'll be looking at charts as I say with strictures and cautions and how how things worked out. So it it's a living astrology. It's an astrology of the moment, and it's an astrology for everyone. Everyone can use it if they're sensible, and they can take themselves out of it and therein lies the rubber course it's so difficult I know when I do charts for myself and I know what I want or charts for really good friends and you know they want something to happen and the chart is actually saying uh -uh, but you're frantically trying to make it nice for them so uh, yeah it's oh, what a great profession I'm just so lucky to be a horary astrologer and and of course to teach it as well so it is a passion listening to you, i was thinking about you know when we're learning a language we're given the rules and then there's the list of exceptions and and i think in a sense that's what you're saying is this, these are the rules but there's always a list of exceptions well, I, I liken it more in, in the olden days when I learned to drive. You learned to drive, you had to do the highway code, you had to hold your hands on the wheel and you had to look in the mirror like that all the time. And then once you've got your driving license, you learn how to do handbrake turns. You learn how to go up one way street backwards really fast. Um, <laughs> And that, and so it is with, with astrology. And I think that's with any form, well, more of traditional astrology. Once you learn the rules and the strictures and what can happen, then yeah, you learn, you learn to bend the rules. Sometimes yeah. you break them. <laughs> Sometimes you break them. Um, so a good example of a rule is there seems to be some something about um, the void of course moon um, not being a good time to take action or something not materializing if the moon is void of course. So how do you see that? Because I know that there are maybe different interpretations to that. Again, I've got a really good chart to demonstrate, <coughs> excuse me, a void of course moon. Um, generally, I take it that nothing will happen until there's a change, that something will change, i.e. when the moon changes signs and makes an aspect the next planet. But we have to remember, sometimes it's not all about the moon. It is actually about 
two planets coming together. And sometimes they actually don't need a mediator. They can come together of their own volition. So it's, um, you know, like at the moment we've got Jupiter and Saturn. They're coming to get, when, you know, once Jupiter moves into Taurus, he will aspect Saturn. And Saturn's in his domicile. So Jupiter doesn't need the moon to go to Saturn and say, hey, buddy, you keep my house warm enough, keeping it dry. It's so there, so people can people can get hung up on the void of course moon, on late degrees rising, on early degrees rising. I have to say, again, I will be demonstrating this, um, that very often it will show that what the querent is asking about is already in process and therefore they can't necessarily change the action. Or if it's early degrees rising, the situation isn't going yet that they can have an input. The situation's still going and the situ, you know, I, either way you look at it, but it's how much the querent can influence matters. And I think that's really what the strictures or cautions come down to. I'll just tell you, a, if you want, a quick story about Saturn in the seventh. I was taken to um, a country to do a horary for somebody very important. And uh, I was taken to this palace and I was the only woman in the room. And the question was asked and I sat there with my little computer. And in those days it was um, EZ was the computer program. And I put the chart up, Saturn was in the seventh. I thought, blast, there goes my diamond encrusted Rolex. And I was right. The astrologer got no um, recognition in public. And what I told the person, they flatly denied. And then a few days later, I had a private message to say actually what I had said was right. And, uh, and thank you very much. Stay here for a month and you can have as many clients as you want. So, yeah, <laughs> but I didn't get my gold diamond encrusted watch, Rolex watch. <laughs> you could also see perhaps Saturn uh, there um, indicating a delayed, <laughs> a delayed reward. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, the, these things do play out over time. But initially, when people come to Horary, it's so exciting and it, it often works. And then later on when you've got a little bit more experience knowledge you think how the heck did that come out when you look back at some of your early charts so uh, another area that often causes confusion is let's say um, someone is doing a chart and it's about their partner or their mother who is the querent the querent is always the rising degree. Now, I, I actually have this myself. I asked a question about my mother. I can't influence the events. So is she the ascendant degree? Is she the planet ruling the fourth house? Because in Ptolemy, the mother is the seventh from the father. Through the centuries, this has become the mother is indicated by the MC or the 10th sign. But my mother is a widow. So she's not the wife of my father. She is my parent and parents very, very specifically are given to the fourth house. It's not parent, it's 
parents. And also in proper traditional astrology, um, and I say proper sort of Renaissance and earlier, that uh, they actually used the lot of the mother. So I had this conundrum. Do I look at the ascendant from my mother? Do I look at the planet ruling the force from my mother? Do I look at the lot of the mother? Anyway, I was wrong, thank God. <laughs> we, whichever one I looked at, I was wrong, which, and again, we're told don't, don't do personal charts. You, you, can't, you can't take yourself out of the chart. But because I couldn't read the chart, and, I, and I, I sent it to some friends to read, and, uh, and, and they also were baffled as to which planet signified my mother. And they too looked at, because they're traditional astrologers, so they looked at all the things I looked at. So, yeah, so when you're asking about a partner, always, without exception, except the partner is ruled by the seventh. That's if they are a partner. Now, a lot of people take a partner, a romantic partner, say someone you're having a wonderful hot fling with as the seventh house, but actually they're the fifth. And anyone who takes the eighth house is a necrophiliac. So, yeah, so you, you, you can say, oh, it's semantics about the word, you know, my partner. Yeah, someone you're going out with, you're not actually living with them. You're having a good time. It's fifth house. If it's someone you're living with, then that's seventh house. So, yeah, and it is it is confusing actually when um, if you're looking for a person who's missing, and you've got no connection with the person who's missing, sometimes you do take the ascendant, but mostly it is the planet on the seventh because you are divorced from them. So if we think of the seventh, there's um, no, the, yeah, there's the, the opposition connection, but we're not tied to them because they will be a different element to us. So they'd be the same gender, but they won't, there will be a different element. So yeah, there are some anomalies. Yes, indeed. Um, be because I've also come across um, ideas whereby if it is somebody that you're living with and you're asking a question and it's something that it's the, that both are involved in, then that would be the ascendant because it's kind of a we question rather than a you question. Yeah, yeah. But again, the chart will tell you. The chart will tell you. You know, if you've got Gemini rising, you hit it in one. Yeah, two of you, two twins. Good and bad. <laughs> so what do you feel is one of the more important aspects to keep in mind before even casting the chart? If you're asking for a client, and I ask all my clients, what, whatever they're coming to, to me for, how will this affect you going forward if it's a negative or a positive answer? And I think that's something everyone needs to bear in mind because we know what a powerful tool the mind is. And people need to think things through before they ask a question. And I, I do say, I do tell clients to go away and think about it and make sure that they will be understanding that if I give them a no answer, that what will they do? And if I give them a yes answer, how will they then proceed? 
Because one of the things I think with our astrology and perhaps our society today is not only do we seek answers, but sometimes the world is such a hard world today. People want to shove some responsibility for their actions. Um, you know, in, in earlier times, it really was a question of, have you got a roof over your head? Have you got some food in your belly? Is your master good or bad? Will you find a better master? Because we forget that in England, most of us were serfs. We were enslaved to somebody. Now we're enslaved to the banks through mortgages and things. It, it's, it's subtly different. And we have so many more pressures on society today. You know, is your phone working? That's a worry. Is your computer working? It's, the world is the same. People's drives and passions are the same. It all comes down to, we say, love, money, health, of course, and a roof over our heads. Those are the driving forces for everyone underlying everything we do. I would add as well that there is a need for agency because if we haven't got sovereignty over ourselves, we have no freedom of choice, no freedom of movement. And I think for mental health, that is hugely important. And I, and I think perhaps this is why we seek answers because for many people, it may be that they're worried that their wish won't be granted, uh, if I can put it that way, or that they will have no influence over what it is that they're attempting to do. So there's a number of things that drive the question that's being asked. Yeah, oh, very definitely. Very definitely. But the fact of the matter is that the majority of horary clients, and this goes amongst all my all my friends who are horary astrologers, it is normally love, money, work, and health. Those are the four main areas. Very rarely do I get someone saying, is the rumor true? Or Will the book arrive? When will the book arrive? Th those are the sort of questions we ask ourselves. When will, when will my box of books arrive that I'm waiting for? I'm so excited about. Not for three days. You look, you know, you see, see what the moon's doing. So I haven't got power over the person who sent me the books, nor have I got power over Royal Mail or, or whoever the courier is. So... I just want to know that the books are going to come to me that I'm waiting for. Exactly. And I think that's also something that I, I was driving at with, with what I was saying earlier, is that it's when we have those moments where we don't feel we have any agency, any power, we want to know the outcome because it's out of our hands, so to speak. How is this going to work out? So... I think it's a very interesting point that you bring where we need to be mindful of how the person who's receiving the news um, is going to react. Because for me, it's a little bit different. As a psychological astrologer, I'm helping somebody to have insight into a situation and how to make the most of a difficult situation, say. What can they take from it? How can they be strengthened by looking at things from a different perspective? Hmm. And so I'm looking at the person being strengthened and leaving, feeling bolstered. Even if I've just told them, you know, that they're, you know, their Pluto transit's got another uh, year to go. <laughs> um, 
it's it's not great news, but I can put a a positive light on it, and that's my job is to help them get through that. What? How does it feel for you when you're when you're looking at this um, horary chart and you're going, uh, uh this isn't going to happen at all? Well, as I said before, a client asked me for a consultation, I asked them to think, if I tell you what you don't want to hear, how are you going to deal with it? How will it affect you going forward? So I try to make my clients aware that life could go in a different direction. But very often with horary, which you don't go into into a talk because you can't, um, but you can say to a client, no, let's take the job analogy. No, you're not going to get that job. But then you look at the chart and you look at the transits or zodiacal releasing or perfections, and you can say, you're gonna stay in this job, which you don't like, but in two years time, you are going to fly. So I'm not giving them an instant panacea, but I am able to look ahead and you can you can see you know you you are serious when you say you're going to fly they are going to fly I mean I don't mean on a plane or grow wings um, and uh, and indeed you know people do come back and I get repeat clients so all right you can say their mind is skewed anyway to coming to a horary astrologer as opposed to a psychological astrologer because they want to know about the here and now they want to know about their business um, and and that's another thing you. Know, business astrology psychological astrology will perhaps help the business owner but it won't help him know what's coming with his business so if he asks me a horary if i go into partnership with x will it benefit me financially and i can look at the chart and go uh -uh. or i can say yes it will. And if I were you, I'd sign contracts on such and such a date. So you kind of bring in the electional, but again, you know, with the perfections and everything. So every form of astrology is pertinent to everyone today. There's no right or wrong astrology. It's just the different approach. But the one thing we all as consulting astrologers have in common is the desire to ensure that our client goes away, if not happy, but understanding and mindful that there is a rhythm to life. Absolutely. I think actually the, there is something very empowering about having a consultation with a, a horary astrologer or a psychological astrologer, or, you know, some of us actually do more than one and we kind of uh, blend them, if so to speak. Um, so as, as it stands, I always have a consultation chart next to me when, I, when I've got a client, you know, who Isn't wants it wonderful? to. It's just yeah, wonderful. absolutely. It's, it's looking because what each discipline of astrology brings is a different perspective to bear mm. and we need all of that information and then we need to be able to kind of knit it together yes. to help the client and what we're looking at is somebody who is probably with us because they are in a, a dilemma or a crisis and helping them have the tools to go away and deal with it and that's empowerment um, which is really why I do what I do, because in those moments where we're feeling pretty low, we need somebody to say, yeah, you can. You know, it may not work out exactly as you want, but here's, here's what you can take. Here's the gift in this horrible pig's tie. <laughs> <You know? laughs> here's the jewel. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and, and you can take it away and, and here's how you might be able to polish it and turn it into something. Hmm. 
because they're looking at this jewel and they're going, really? <laughs> Was it worth it? <laughs> yes, it is, because here's what you can do with it. I think that's a, a tremendous thing to be able to help people with. Yeah, well, it, it, I always use, again, another sort of adage that people only go to a doctor when they're ill. People only come to the likes of us when they're at a crossroads and they literally don't know which path to take. They, they can't see the wood for the trees. So they come to us and we use the planets to shed light on the path and tell them there might be a spook behind the tree down the road, but when you just get past that spook, there's lovely Venus shining all her radiant glory. Absolutely. Do you know, it's, it's made me think about um, why I called my program Lightways. And it's, it is because when I was thinking about what astrology means, I thought about people navigating by the stars and, and the light that is cast by the stars by the planets um and that's exactly why i i think of astrology as light ways the the way to light up the path when actually it feels quite dark yeah beautiful yeah well we sing we sing from the same hymn sheet don't we indeed we do and so i think at this point i want to remind everyone that if you want to learn more about horary astrology, the thing to do is to go to the Astrology Lodges website, a link to which will be on the description box. And then it's on the 15th of April between 10 and 4.30. And you will be able to see Sharon um, amongst others, including Marcos Patchett, who is looking at decumbiture and um, if you, and in fact, I'm not interviewing Marcos at the moment, but I'm going to put a link to his interviews in the description box as well, so that you have a taste for what he does. And, um, and of course, there is Tanya Daniels, um, who I've already spoken to in the previous um, week. So plenty for you to enjoy. And Sharon, thank you very much for your time here today. Well, thank you for inviting me on. It's, it's a real honour and pleasure to actually, you know, chat with you and enthuse about my passion and what <laughs> I'll be talking about at the Lodge in a couple of weeks' time. Well, passion and astrology, I think the two just go together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you all for watching and do remember also to check out my website as I have um, some courses running actually beginning um, beginning this Saturday. So make sure that you check that, check that out as well. And um, until next time, ah, now next time, who will I be speaking to? We will, I'll be looking at astrology through the ages. Until then, goodbye.